having done some discussion of the implication, the arrow symbol, we're going to talk about a couple of things that are related to that symbol. These are variations of given some theorem or statement. Our simple example we had earlier was the if x is positive, then x cubed is positive or something like that. There's various ways you could modify that, and we might be curious if those are also true. So if the original statement is true, what else might you be able to conclude? So the first one's called the inverse, which is taking the original implication, which here we can see is p implies q, and looking at not p implies not q. So putting a negation in front of both of them. If we look at that, let's see what occurs. So we're going to create our truth table for p, q, and p implies q. Let's do that rather quickly here. We have true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And if you remember that this is false only when you have true implies false. And then everywhere else it is true. So for completeness, let's make a column for not P and a column for not Q. When we do that, we'll have false, false, true, true by switching the first column. Then we'll have false, true, false, true by switching the second column. And then here, when we have not p implies not q, just like we had before, we were looking for when we had the first entry being true and the second entry being false. Here that occurs in the third row instead. So we have that it is false in the third row and then true everywhere else. So the inverse is not the same. This is a common reasoning error that people will make. When I first learned this material, the way that if we were given an example is one I mentioned earlier, that if it rains, then the grass will be wet. If it doesn't rain, there's other ways in which the grass can still be wet. That's not necessarily a true statement. If the, even if the first thing is true, the inverse where you negate both premises, so if it doesn't rain, then the grass is not wet, is not necessarily true. So the implication and its inverse do not share the same truth value. Another way you might imagine switching it, and we talked a little bit about this before, is the converse. This is where you switch which variables which. So when you have p implies q, you might ask, what about q implies p? So let's do the exact same thing. While we're filling out the table, I'll tell a bit of an anecdote, which is when I first learned this, the professor said that the way that he remembered it was the difference between inverse and converse was that the converse is like shoes, and you put your shoes on the opposite feet. When it doesn't make any sense to me, but for some reason that decided to stick in my head. So the way I remember the difference between inverse and converse is that converse are shoes. You could put them on your wrong feet. You don't negate your shoes. I don't know why, but somehow this is stuck in my head for 10 years now. So for whatever reason, you're also going to get that information. So let's fill out the exact same table here like we're already doing. True, false, true, true. And then look at Q implies P. And just as we mentioned before, we're looking for a column where the hypothesis is true and the consequent there is false. So just like we saw before, this is also false when we have the third row there. So the converse and the inverse are not necessarily true if the original statement is true. You can say something like, if my name is Nick, then I am a human. And you can't just switch that to if I am a human, then my name is Nick. The original statement may be true, but the converse where you switch the hypothesis and the conclusion is not necessarily true. With that in mind, we're going to try to combine them both at once, do the converse and then the inverse, or you can think about the opposite of that, doing the inverse and then the converse, where we switch both of them and also negate them. That is called the contrapositive. And let's try to find out whether or not that holds. So we have for our own sanity, <coughs> I'm going to copy down with the magic of copy paste, the first table that we have. And then we want to make a column for the converse, which is not Q implies not P. And we're looking for the entry where we have a true hypothesis and a false conclusion that occurs in the second row. And then everywhere else, this is true. And in this case, this is actually identical to the P implies Q column. So if you take a statement, then both swap the hypothesis and conclusion and negate it, then the original and that new statement with all the negations and swapping are both the same. So with our example we just talked about, if I, my name is Nick, then I am human. The 
contrapositive of that statement is if I am not a human, then my name is not Nick. Obviously, there could be cats and things called Nick, so that original statement is probably not true. But as a sort of completion there, we have this idea that you can swap both and negate both, and that is exactly the same as the original. We often call that logically equivalent, which is actually related to our next symbol, which we have right down here below, which is called the biconditional. The biconditional is an arrow that goes both directions. It just asserts that two things are the same, that whenever you have true for one, you have true for the other one, and whenever you have false for one, you have false for the other one. It's saying that P and Q are exactly 100% the same. You often read this as if and only if, P if and only if Q. So let's write down a truth table for it. We have P, we have Q, and then P if and only if is what how you should read that symbol. And let's fill out our columns. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. And this is true just if the letters match. So in the first row and the last row, we see that the true, true, and false, false match, and then the other ones, they differ. So we're going to have true in those and false in the ones where they disagree. That is what this means. This is sometimes also called logical equivalence. As an example of where the symbol shows up, it's often just used to say that two things are exactly the same. So you might say something like P implies Q is logically equivalent to not Q implies not P which is what we showed above with the contrapositive. That is an official statement that the contrapositive is logically equivalent to the original implication. This is a way to just say these two things are exactly the same. You can think of it like an equal sign. It behaves exactly the same as you might expect of an equal sign.